tickets that you can get from Almirante, which is the city with the port. The boat is supposed to leave every 30 minutes and they're supposed to carry about 20 people. And you're basically going out there for island hopping. What's the point of bringing your vehicle unless you're going to be staying there long term? Get a little contrast. It's a nice area. Very big style markets with tons of stuff brought over from China, I believe. I'm I've spent the past year and a half driving my motorcycle through Latin America, living in each country for a minimum of six weeks, from Mexico to Guatemala to El Salvador, Honduras, Nicaragua, Costa Rica, and now I'm here. This has been one of the most difficult projects I've ever embarked upon, and I really hope you enjoy all this content coming at you now. Welcome back to Generic Expats. It is February 4th, Sunday morning at around 9.30, and this is typically in Latin America, a very calm time of the week as people generally sleep in, they go out, have these late night parties on Saturday. I mean, you can see right here, they had a bit of a beer party here. <laughs> and today we find ourselves in an island in the archipelago called Bocas del Toro in Panama. Just arrived to Panama yesterday. I crossed over from Costa Rica at the Sixaola border, and I did the visa crossing and the the temporary permit for my motorcycle as well. There, we have some dogs. Looks like they're about to fight. <laughs> and today, I'm going to take you on a little walking tour of the downtown area of this area of Cologne Island. We're in the bigger island in the western part. There are many islands in this archipelago, whereas this one is specifically called Cologne Island, and I believe we're going to what is the, the Bocas del Toro downtown area. We're walking on this main street that goes around the, the bend and meets actually the nearby island called Corenero, I believe is the name, which I will be going to today. today the plan is to go do some hiking around this island and then do some surfing if there are decent surfing waves and surfing schools as I found some made some new friends that want to go check these surfing areas out and possibly do the hike also on the same day. I have one full day here. I'm not staying too long. Therefore, it's going to be once again another quick trip as I make my way over to Panama City, the capital, the capital suburbs. In fact, is where I'm going to be staying for the next five to six weeks before I send my bike by, by plane and myself over to Colombia. So I'll be traveling to Colombia, flying and sending my bike as well. And that will be about around mid-March. So let's go ahead and start looking at what we're, what we're seeing here in the downtown area. There is a lot of construction in this downtown area because it seems like maybe they are repairing the, the roads or whatever it is, I'm not sure. They are definitely in what we would call disrepair, a <laughs> sad state. While driving over here from Costa Rica, from Sixaola, Boy, the roads were in pretty bad shape. I don't know, I really hope that's not a common thing here in Panama. I've heard the roads here in general are pretty good, but as you can see, this is what you're seeing here, February 4th, 2024. Just literally construction everywhere. I mean, it's a good sign that in the future there's going to be better roads and everything's going to be in better condition, but who knows how long that will take and when that future will come. So that's something that nobody knows about. Only the Panamanians can control that. And hopefully, fingers crossed, this area of Bocas del Toro in the central downtown area is going to be looking nice, crisp, and clean soon to come. All right, so we're reaching some areas with tours, I believe. Yeah, tours, shuttles, activities, 
There's Sea View Bar and Restaurant. There's a lot of that to, to see here, so definitely not the only one. <laughs> okay, here is downtown Urban Centro, the fair, the market, the ocean fair, and then we have Boco del Drago Beach, Dragon Mouth Beach. So yeah, quite a few options here. I wish I could have brought my motorcycle down to drive around like that guy, but too much of a hassle. As you can tell, people are riding their bicycles around here a lot as this is kind of the main th way to get around the island. The island isn't super big, so you can actually use your bicycle to get around pretty quickly. As I mentioned before, I didn't want to bring my motorcycle across from <laughs> the mainland. Almirante has a lot of parking spots and I left my motorcycle in a parking spot called Leza. Leza was a, a place I found on Google. Many people talked about how she's so friendly and, and everything worked out great, price was good. So I decided to trust all these random Google feedback people. <laughs> I leave feedback as well on my own uh, activities and when I make purchases as well. So I'm gonna say that hopefully the people are genuine that left their feedback and comments. And I'll be going back to the mainland to Almirante, which is called tomorrow. So we'll see. But yeah, it's at Leza's parking area. It's uh, $3 per day. So I'm gonna pay $6 upon returning. And it's right in front of one of the docks or the piers that has boats coming out here to um, Cologne Island, the main port. So it was very convenient and, you know, very good price. Leza seemed like a very nice woman. So definitely we'll see how everything turns out. I think it should be okay. And then I can totally recommend her <laughs> for everyone else that wants to come out here and not bring their vehicle. Because, yeah, I mean, there was two options. I could bring my vehicle, my motorcycle, and I think the transport or, you know, transfer whatever by boat bringing my motorcycle wasn't super expensive. but. I'm only staying here for two days, one full, one full day really, two nights. Therefore, what's the point <laughs> of trying to send it there and send it back? I mean, if I'm staying a week or a month, yeah, obviously. Tons of bananas, it looks like, huge bananas. This is the port, it looks like, or a port, a restaurant. Uh, yeah, I think the port's actually over that way. But here's a restaurant with some private boats. Hola, buen dia. <laughs> so nice guys with bananas. This area is absolutely chocked full of banana chiquita container ships. Our containers are everywhere for the filling up the container ships in this area of Central America. Central America has a lot of shipping going on and specifically Panama, obviously with the Panama Canal, it's famous for that. So I believe we have a kind of a, a hub for shipping, even in these ports nearby. The Almirante port had some massive, massive cargo ships passing by when we were leaving. Here we have the Bomberos, which is the firefighter station, fire station. We're gonna be going to the downtown area. And as you can tell, we have more and more construction going on. In this downtown area, we are not exempt <laughs> from being put through some of these renovations, you know, revamping the downtown area, hopefully making it better for the future. We'll just hope that it's going quickly and not just staying in constant states of disrepair as it is now. All right, guys, so let's talk a little bit about accommodation options. I really don't have many to suggest besides the one I'm staying at is an Airbnb. It's an Airbnb here, 10 minutes walking from the ferry, really good location. And it was a really comfortable sleep last night. And the price is very good. I think I paid 20 to $25 per night, but that's a private room with air conditioning um, on Airbnb. So I think that's probably the starting rate. I don't think there's much cheaper than that, especially private rooms with AC. However, if you want to make it to a hostel, share rooms and stuff, I'm sure there's a lot of that where you can find it for like eight, 10, 15 or whatever it is. Toda, todo a dollar. Everything for a dollar, okay. Dollar store. 
looks like we find ourselves in a bit more of a, well, yep, here is a, speaking of hostels, this is a hostel, Selena. Selena's a good hostel. I've stayed up before, I think in Mexico. And these are areas with private rooms and dorms, and I believe they're pretty good prices as well. This is more of like a, kind of like a fancy-ish dorm experience where you pay a bit more but have really good beds and then the private rooms are quite expensive comparatively to for pro probably more than what I paid. Um, yeah, so that is an option as well. Looks like we have some tours as well. Oh, let's go back. Here, here's the map of the archipelago. Archipelago. So we are on San Cristobal Island here. On Almirante is where I was yesterday. Can we go? And we'll be, I'll be heading over, oh no, sorry, not Cristobal, Almirante to Colón, here, to Bocas del Toro, Bocas Town is called, I guess the Bocas Township, and then heading over to Carnero, uh, Carnero is the name of this island here, which has a nice hiking area, and supposedly some decent uh, surfing spots as well. This is an info center, uh, you can see that there is a Surfboards for rent, safaris, chocolate tours, water taxis, fishing. They have a, the whole thing here for you to pick up some tickets for tours and surfboards and all the likes. Let's keep on walking. BDT. There's the police passing by. Seems like the the area has quite a bit of police. Or maybe this is the police station. I don't know. I've seen quite a few pass by in the past 10 minutes. Maybe a good thing. Maybe a bad thing. Who knows? <laughs> There's some scooters. How much are you renting the scooters for? Forty dollars, twenty-four hours. Forty dollars per day. Got it. Thank you. Barco hundido. The house of fresh and delicious seafood. The seafood shop here. Probably not open at 9 or 10 in the morning. I think where this park is, I think probably over there. Let's do a little walk around. Oh, there's a police station, so that makes sense now. Here we have a oceanfront cocktail and looks like Hotel. Is this the uh, ferry area? Yeah, it looks like the ferry. Yeah, this is where I came in yesterday. Bocados. Delicatessen, I guess, coffee shop, food area, Casa Papaya. Police station here in Duo Mark. Vainas de Gordo. The fat guy's stuff. <laughs> Vainas. <clears throat> okay, now it's time to talk a little bit about the environment here, the cultural style. It's very similar to what I was experiencing in the Costa Rican Caribbean as well, with some influence, lots of influence from the, the African type of culture. Um, with that being food and people, customs, religion. I'm not sure if they are the same in religion, but I just, you know, I can imagine that crossing over the border there wasn't a massive difference between what I saw in Costa Rica in Cahuita, in that area, in Puerto Viejo, and coming over here. My guess, probably only slightly true, but my guess is that it's very similar African culture as this entire area used to belong to the British Empire. So there should be some similarities, at least, at least a few. All right, well, we're still in the downtown area. Restaurant Chitre. And I'm not seeing many new roads. Seems like there's almost constant <laughs> looking um, construction projects going on. There's a happy kid. Let's walk this way. Let me turn that cafe. 
one thing I can comment is that I'm really happy with my new sandals I just picked up. <laughs> the small things count, right? I just found a, uh, a supermarket next to my house and actually all the supermarkets I walked past going to my apartment or going to my, my accommodation were seemingly owned by uh, Chinese and they're similar like very big style markets with tons of stuff brought over from China, I believe. I mean, these were Chinese cheaper sandals. What's up, bro? And oh, it looks like here's the park, but it looks like a children's park. Eh, the local children's park. There's some guys crushing some brewskis, 10 a.m. <laughs> They're not stopping, maybe. Yeah, this is a children's park, so. I wasn't sure, sometimes the parks, the central parks, the downtown areas can be really great, really nice. I can't say that's that's the idea I have about this one. Looks okay, but not as good as other places I've been to, that's for sure. Here we in, we are going to cross by the supermarket I went to yesterday. Supermarket and pharmacy, Cayo Zapatilla. Here's some areas with some food. Remember, it's passing by here, and it has some good lunches for quite cheap. I might come by here if I'm around the area. They serve it like this way, like buffet style, and have lunches for, these are all dollars, so tea for 75 cents, uh, lunches for 550 with chicken, meat, fish, and uh, rice soup is 350. So yeah, these are good prices overall. Okay, <laughs> well, never mind. We'll just continue on. Here again, we have the police passing by. Got some loud music playing over here. Let's keep on walking to around, get, get around the corner to show you the full view of what is the downtown area of Boca Town. Lots of bicycles here. People are loving. This form of transport here is the best, it seems. You guys are getting out for whatever reason. Supermarket, Isla Colon. Colon Island Supermarket. Let's take a look inside here. This one looks nicer, I think it's AC. Yeah. Nice big supermarket, these are good. What? So as I mentioned before, it's starting to look like a lot of these big supermarkets here are, are really packed full of items and things, products brought over from China and the people working there. And I believe the owners are as well Chinese, which is you know, interesting to see. A lot of downtown areas <clears throat> that I've seen in, for example, Rio de Janeiro. Oh man, lots of Chinese owners of the local supermarkets. I was kind of confused to see that and it looks like that's a similar situation here. Here's some information center. So they're selling tours as well. Another supermarket here. And yeah, here's a, a refresqueria, a place with drinks as well. Bocas del Toro. Here we have bike rentals. How much is the bike rentals, my man? Pardon? How much is the bike rentals per day? Per day is $10 the whole day. $10, thank you. You're welcome. $10 for a full day. Oh, sorry. $10 per day for the bicycles, $40 for the motorbikes. That's okay. Yeah, I mean, those prices aren't bad. $10 for a bicycle. Uh, $40 for the motorbike. It's a little steep. I remember renting a little scooter back in Hawaii when I lived there. And it was 40, actually 35, so yeah. More here than Hawaii, but that was a long time ago. <clears throat> so I'm sure prices are far, far higher there now. Anyways, looks like we are getting deep into what is the construction area again. <laughs> uh, Focus Town. Yeah. A lot more construction in this area. A never ending situation, it seems. And yeah, that's gonna be the end of our downtown walk here.
take all my videos with my phone. Here's a nice area here of Coordinator Island. Here's these cool cabins built. Oh, that was a sinkhole there. Here we have a nice boat out at this dock, private dock. Pretty sweet yellow house, pretty huge, that's for sure. So far this Coordinator Island is looking pretty beautiful. Outside the city area, the city's a bit rough around the edges, but as are most cities around certain parts. Wonder how much these cost to build or or buy. Here is a very real danger here. Danger! Falling coconuts. Boop. Tickets that you can get from Almirante, which is the city with the port. They're going to be $7 if you go one way and $12 if you go both ways. And now the ferry is not very long. It seems very far on the map and I swore it was going to be many hours, but it was only 30 minutes, I think 25. So they go every 30 minutes. I believe it starts at seven in the morning until five, something like that, or six to six. It's every 30 minutes. You don't have to really buy in advance because there are so many, they're cheap. 25 minutes, it's fast. Keep in mind, this is Latin America, so the boat is supposed to leave every 30 minutes and they're supposed to carry about 20 people. There's about 40 or 50 people here. <laughs> I don't know. I can't count, but probably won't leave on this boat. Everyone will have to get split up into many different boats. And yeah, so always prepare for the long-term battle. We currently find ourselves in the Valencia Ferry Port, which is one of the many ferries that takes you out to the Focus del Toro archipelago. Excuse me, permiso, permiso, permiso. Permiso. And I can definitely suggest where I parked my motorcycle. I left it there for two days. I mean, not two full days. Just just under two full days. And it's called Mesa. And it's literally right there. You can see right here. My motorcycle is right there. She charges for motorcycles three dollars per day and I'm just about to pay it. One final thing to mention about going to this archipelago and to the islands. Cologne is where I went. Cologne Island which is the main island with Bocas Township and the thing is when you are considering if you want to bring your vehicle or not I mean there's a bunch of parking areas around this Almirante uh, port town and the idea is if you're going out to this archipelago which is just a massive series of islands and you're basically going out there for island hopping what's the point of bringing your vehicle unless you're going to be staying there long term like really long term so for example i was only there for two days less than two days if you're planning to go for more than two days a week still not sure if it's worth it really a month or beyond that's probably worth bringing a vehicle out there's ferries i believe the ferries aren't super expensive either so it's probably worth bringing out if it's actually long term but if it's short term probably not the best way to see the bocas del toro archipelago I chatted with Benson, who I hope to have on this channel if I come back, and he mentioned that these streets are actually being broken down and they're going to be repaired right back up with a new drainage system. So the reason why all these streets have been completely torn apart, and of course I saw it on the weekend so I didn't see any people working, so I thought, well why is there so much damage and the streets are torn up so much, why, why, why would that be without any people working? And that was because I came on a Saturday and Sunday, of course, they're not working, the uh, public. Uh, construction workers. So that's another thing to keep in mind. Hopefully, he said uh, the government is, is expecting to finish this within uh, the next year. It's already been about a year since they started. So hopefully this new drainage system will work out well because they said that the city, the entire area is very low in uh, sea level it's, and it floods off. And so this will help to alleviate that. Are you ready for a typical Sunday here? Focus Township in Focus del Toro Archipelago, Cologne Island. Well, music starts there, 
people keep going that way. This is a Sunday around 5 p.m. People are just chilling on these streets, just enjoying the music. Here's the bank. People are standing around. <laughs> I'm not sure. They're actually doing something. If there's about to something, about for something to happen, we're waiting for some parade. Looks like a parade. <laughs> um, is there a, well, there's a guy with a mask. I think this might be a pre-carnival celebration, perhaps. <laughs> yeah, it looks like they're doing some type of costume photo shoot. Yeah, yeah, so the costume situation now makes sense. <laughs> yeah. I don't know exactly what it is. That could be it though, yeah. yeah there's a street food over there. People just standing around. So many. <laughs> there's some street food here. Just keep on stretching on. Looks like they're having a little party. Little party. Little backyard party. From my best guess, I think it's probably a pre-carnival related celebration within families and friends and all these things because as we can see with the masks and the guy showing off the masks, I think that's something coming up. It's starting I think on the 8th and it's around the 2nd or 3rd I think, so that's within a week. So that's what's going to happen. Hola! So that's my best guess. I guess, I guess my best is as good as yours, but guys, <laughs> that seems to be the way to celebrate, putting on the mask and dancing. No dances has happened yet that I've seen, so I'm going to be arriving to Panama City in order to possibly see that myself. You're enjoying all the content and providing entertainment from some walking tours of the areas that I'm visiting and staying in while I make my way over to the capital city and live there for six weeks. Please hit that like, subscribe, and notification bell, please, and let me know what you think. Are you enjoying some of these walk-arounds? Do you like places like this? Would you come and rent a scooter for $40 per day? $10 for the bicycle, the food? You can find it for as cheap as $4 or $5 for lunch, so not bad. Um, and guys, if you're in, enjoying my content and you're wishing to contribute to the channel, there's always the PayPal donation available, as well as buy me a coffee in the links below. So guys, here we are, Panama last country in Central America before we send the bike over to South America to Colombia and start chapter number two. Hasta la próxima.